All right, what's going on guys? Tosker here and in this video we are going to talk about the magnificent control called the combo box. And one thing I want you to keep note is the things we learn with the combo box, a lot of it is also applicable to the list view and the list box. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. So first things I want to show you is if you want to follow along, you can get all this XAML in the description if you are the type of person who likes to type along with me. Um, I have it in four sections because I'm going to show you five different things, two of which are in the second column. And first I'm going to show you how to create the combo box and then how to define items within our XAML. So we're going to, as always, create our control with simple opening and closing tags and inside is where we will define our items. So I can say combo box item. And inside I can do item one. So as you see, we can simply just type in plain text within a combo box item and we will have our option in the designer. We can also do combo box item. We can also put controls for the content of it. So I could create a text block and call this item two. And if I build the application real quick, can now see that item one and item two kind of look, well actually they do look exactly the same. So you can get the same results. The only difference would be is if we want to do styling to the text block and give it colors, it might be easier to do it that way. But you'd be able to do it with this, but depends you might want to use text block so that's fun to know and another thing you might like to know is we can also do shapes or images or pretty much any kind of control we can use as the combo box item so we'll create another combo box item and now you might ask well what if I want to put more than one thing inside the combo box item more than one control well you can do that uh, the only thing is though is you have to remember is you need one piece of uh, you need one control so for example I need a stack panel and I can put many controls inside inside the stack panel so long as the stack panel is the primary content of the combo box item so I can do let's say an ellipse and I can do a width of 15 and a height of 15. If you don't know what an ellipse is, uh, the video right before this actually covered it. And we can fill it as red. So I can put this in here. But what I can't do is if I wanted a uh, text block as well to say red item, I couldn't do text block red item. I can't set this outside of the stack panel. Stack panel is the primary content of the combo box and we can't set more than one control as the content. So I can copy this, erase it, and paste it below. And I'm gonna want these side by side, so I'm gonna change the orientation to horizontal. So now if I run the application, or build the application rather, we see that we have a red ellipse and it says red item. So we created another item with multiple controls within it. And you can also do, again, images, buttons, uh, another combo box, really, if, if you could find a reason to do that. So that's pretty much how we define it in our XAML. Next is, what if we want it from a collection we have in our code behind or in our, uh, in our business logic? Uh, what if we want those to be the items for the user to select instead of you know going through and manually defining each one well luckily you can also do that so under here we're going to create a collection of string names and a collection of brushes now we don't have this just yet but we're going to simply create a combo box and this is where we'll access the item source property and the item source property can take a collection of many things, a list or an array, or pretty much any, uh, any object that is derived from the IEnumerable interface. So we'll call it name collection. This does not exist just yet, but it will in just a moment. So we're going to create combo box, set its item source to, to bind to a name collection that we're gonna create. And for colors, we're going to do a combo box 
item source and we'll do binding to brush collection which is another collection that we will create so now we have our two combo boxes and we have our item sources now we gotta actually create the item source so we're going to have a combo box view model and for the sake of time I already had it prepped uh, again you'll be able to access this code or you can copy it it's kind of small and essentially we created a list of strings called name collection and again it's a property because we're binding and we have a brush collection as well which is also a property and then we have a whoops and then we have a little constructor here that will establish some basic uh, values in these collections so we have Joe, Jane, Jerry, Mary, Larry for the name collection and red, green, blue, orange for the brush collection so now we have to also go to our main window because if we're binding so we go to the code behind of our main window sorry if that was a little uh, abrupt change there for you and um, we're going to set the data context to our combo box view model that we created in the project so you can also type that in as well and again the code will be available in the description or on the site so now we have name collection and brush collection and if we run the application We're going to see we open up our names we have Joe, Jane, Jerry, Mary, Larry I actually didn't do that on purpose too it's, it's kind of funny but uh, anyways and then we have colors and okay so this kind of makes sense it's the color values of the brushes that we put in but um, you might have been expecting well uh, why it should be colored why you know we're, we're binding to brushes why isn't it display a color and that's because well we're only really the combo box by net by default is just going to return the string value it doesn't know what to do with the brush object it just knows that it has to present the brush object to the user it doesn't know that the brush object really is a color or or um, or an image it doesn't know that it just knows that whatever this object is I'm I'm gonna show you so by default it'll just show you the string value no different than if you did uh, brushes dot red dot to string that value you get is the value you're going to get in your combo box and we're also not gonna see it when we select it now I showed you this because now we're going to move on to templated colors which means we're going to create an item template that will be able to display these colors rather than just return a string value that we can't really even select so we'll close our application and we're going to now scroll down here a bit and we're going to go to our templated colors and now create a combo box as we usually do fix that a bit so now we're going to have our combo box and one thing we're going to do that isn't a combo box it's not anything specific to the combo box itself but we are going to be seeing it for the first time if you've only watched my videos this will be the first time you see it and we're going to check out our combo box and then we're going to access the item template now you might be wondering what this is and the item template is essentially uh, the template of what defines what an item looks like so by default this is just a string no different than when we type in plain text into the combo box item it's just a, the combo box item is template is just a plain string so by doing this we can override it to become something new so we're going to have to first it always the item template has to have the parent of a data template this is what represents the specific item so this isn't necessarily towards the combo box but the each specific item we're going to have in our collection so we're going to have the data template of this be an ellipse and we'll give it a width of 15 and a height of 15 and fill and since they're all going to be different we want the fill of the each ellipse to be specific to whatever it is bound to in the data template so we're actually going to only have to simply say binding and we actually gotta close that too and so we're just gonna say binding and now you might be wondering well why aren't we calling brush collection shouldn't we be calling brush collection and you're actually right 
we should be, which we call in the combo box. So in the combo box, we set the item source binding brush collection. So the fun thing we're learning here is the combo box item source is to the brush collection we have in our view model. And then the item template is representing each item. So like before, when we had the color values displayed as a string, that's what each of these data templates going to be. And it's going to be each of its data context. So the data context of this data template for each item is going to be whatever item it is representing in that collection. So when we call ellipse binding, it's going to say for every combo box item, bind to whatever um, its data context is, which in this case will be a brush. So now we can start the application. And we'll go over here to our templated colors. And as you see, now we have our red our green, our blue, and our orange all perfectly templated into a little ellipse representing them instead of over here where we just simply have some string values that really don't make much sense to an average user. So close the application now and we only got one thing left and it's actually not too exciting and it's nothing really uh, you're going to use maybe too often with the combo box but I think it was a fun little extra to throw in and it's being able to change the cursor of the combo box or uh, when you're hovering over combo box items. So we're going to do this by creating a combo box like we always do. And here we're going to access, like before when we did the item template, now we're going to access the item container style. And if you're unfamiliar with styles um, and you're interested in, interested in learning them, let me know in the comments because I have been thinking about doing a video on WPF styles. But for now, just kind of pretend you know what I'm saying because it's not that important. But So just pretend you know what I'm saying and try to follow along. Don't be uh, discouraged if you don't understand it. So within our item container style, we're simply going to now create a style. We need a target type because we need to tell it what it is styling. It's just you know we, we can't just say style you know item template container so we're going to do target type combo box item and then we have something called setter tags which is where we can set the property of this target type so this target type has a cursor property and we can set the value to and this is where we see all the cool little cursors that we can uh, set and in this case, I think there's one in particular I find interesting, pen. I don't know why I like it, but I do like the pen. Okay, so we have item container style, style, and now we're setting the cursor property to the pen. And now we're going to, uh, we'll simply create some uh, XAML defined items just so we can see. So we got item one and item two here. And another thing though is notice now, this is for the combo box item. It's not the combo box, so when we hover over here, it's gonna still be an arrow and it's when we go to the items is when it'll be a pen. So if we wanna change that, we can actually also do the combo box itself has a cursor property and we can set that to a hand. We don't need to do all this funny business with it. So. Now that we have that, we'll hit start. And we got our little uh, application here. And we got cursor style. So notice now I have the arrow, as I would for all these other ones. And when I hover it over it, it turns into the little hand. And when I select it, as I go down to the items, it is now a pen. So I just thought that would be uh, a little interesting a little extra to throw in there for anybody interested in learning and really that's it as always my control videos are a little longer than they should be but you know it's a control video so if I'm gonna make a video on what a control is I figure I'll at least try and go into as much detail as possible because if you're looking for something brief and short uh, chances are you can find that on Google about a thousand results just by searching it so I like to go in a little more detail but with that out of the way, 
uh, that's really it. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you like and don't like about the things I do and how I do them. And uh, if there's a control you're interested in learning more about or if there's styles, for example, like I said, you want to learn about, just let me know what you want me to do because really I often come back to these control videos when I don't know what I want to do next. So you guys, uh, I've had people email me and stuff and uh, you give me some good ideas that I'm actually working on some. So, <sighs> yeah, bye. See ya. Peace out. So long. Farewell.